high temperature superconducting materials. At temperatures approaching absolute zero, certain materials demonstrate a lack of resistance to electrical current. This phenomenon is known as superconductivity and is a fairly recent scientific discovery. For several decades, scientists believed that superconductivity could only occur at extremely low temperatures, specifically below 30 degrees Kelvin. However, in the 1980s, it was discovered that certain materials could function as superconductors at temperatures well above the critical temperatures theoretically possible. While researchers at first struggled to understand these seemingly impossible materials, more recent advancements have shed light onto the science behind superconductivity and high-temperature superconducting materials. High-temperature superconducting materials have the potential to revolutionize humankind's transfer and usage of electrical energy, and advancements in the field will continue throughout the coming decades. In 1911, the Dutch physicist Heike Kamerling Onis was conducting investigations into the behavior of materials at low temperatures. Onis noticed that the electrical resistivity of metals such as mercury, tin, and lead would drop to zero at a few degrees above absolute zero. Realizing the significance of this discovery, Onis wrote extensively about the extraordinary properties of these supercooled metals, also coining the term superconductivity. Following Kamerling Onis' discovery, many other scientists investigated materials' properties at cryogenic temperatures. Aside from metals, several alloys and compounds were found to have superconducting properties at near absolute zero temperatures. In 1933, Walter Meisner and Robert Oxenfeld discovered that when a magnetic field was applied to a superconductor, an electric current was induced in the superconductor that cancelled out the external magnetic field. This effect was called the Meissner effect and was an instrumental step in explaining superconductivity. The first theory to explain the Meissner effect was proposed in 1935 by Fritz and Heinz London and derived the dependence of the induced magnetic field from the distance to the surface. In 1950, Emmanuel Maxwell observed an isotope effect in superconducting metals that suggested that electron-phonon coupling might be responsible for superconductivity. In the same year, Vitaly Ginzburg and Lev Landau proposed a theory which extended the London theory with an added order parameter and explained the properties of superconductors, also predicting the division of superconductors into two types. In 1957, John Bardeen, Leon Cooper, and John Schreifer developed a complete theory of superconductivity that explained the phenomenon in terms of Cooper pairs in an energy shell interacting with the material lattice, nullifying the material's electric resistivity. This theory was later complemented by the work of several scientists. In 1958, Nikolai Bogolyubov showed that the bardeen cooper schreifer theory could be derived from the electronic Hamiltonian. In 1959, Lev Garkov showed that the BCS theory reduced to the Ginzburg-Landau theory at temperatures close to or below the critical temperature for a given material. A number of scientists were able to use the BCS theory to examine superconductors in greater detail and to make important discoveries about superconductors. For some time, it was generally believed that all superconductors obeyed the principles set out by the BCS theory. While this was later found to be incorrect, the theory did provide a valuable basis for further study of superconductivity. The key idea introduced by the BCS theory was that the exchange of phonons, quantum quasiparticles of energy, introduces an attractive interaction between electrons when the material is cooled below its critical temperature. This attraction is energetically favored and can overcome the Coulomb force pushing the electrons apart. 
The electrons then become Cooper pairs, bound electron pair states that no longer have to occupy higher energy states. These Cooper pairs are said to have condensed in velocity space into a macroscopic quantum state, and this condensation is the reason for superconductivity. The energy gap offers a sort of resistance-free tunnel for electric current. Because the thermal energy is lower than the band gap at temperatures below critical, the collisions that would normally cause resistance to occur do not occur. Independent experiments, such as the little Parks experiment, demonstrated the validity of components of the BCS theory. Technological applications of superconductivity advanced side by side with the scientific explanations, with many scientists and researchers quickly recognizing the potential of superconducting materials. In 1961, scientists discovered that an alloy of niobium and tin could support high current densities in high magnetic fields, and the following year, scientists discovered that an alloy of niobium and titanium could support high current densities in even higher magnetic fields. The development of metallic superconductors continued for several decades and contributed to the creation of machines such as the MRI, among many others. At the time, superconductivity was extremely difficult to study because liquid hydrogen or helium, not available in high supply, were usually required to cool metals to their critical temperatures. Scientists had speculated that by BCS theory, no superconductors could exist that would have critical temperatures above 30 Kelvin, and the highest known critical temperature at the time was 23 Kelvin for a niobium-germanium alloy. Thus, the discovery of a lanthanum-based material with critical temperature of 35 Kelvin in 1986 by Johannes Bednors and Karl Müller was astonishing and replacing lanthanum with yttrium to yield a critical temperature of 92 Kelvin was nothing short of miraculous. Not only did this material shatter the predicted temperature boundary, it was possible to study with liquid nitrogen, due to its critical temperature being higher than the boiling point of nitrogen. In 1988, two more high-temperature superconducting materials were discovered, bismuth strontium calcium copper oxide with a critical temperature of 107 kelvin and thallium barium calcium copper oxide with a critical temperature of 125 kelvin prior to advancements with cuprates a new different class of superconductors that did not obey bcs theory had been discovered in 1979 a material consisting of cerium copper, and silicon was found to have superconducting properties. In the next five years, several similar materials were found to have superconducting properties, all of which contained elements belonging to the f-block of the periodic table. Due to the presence of 4f or 5f electrons in these materials, such compounds are sometimes referred to as heavy fermion materials. In addition to heavy fermion superconducting materials, organic, carbon-based superconductors were also discovered. The organic superconductors were composed of tetramethyl tetrathiophylvalene or tetramethyl tetraselenophylvalene, separated by anions with octahedral or tetrahedral geometry. Alkali-doped fullerenes large spherical molecules of 60 carbon atoms interspersed with alkali atoms were also found to be superconductive, albeit at low temperatures. The discovery of ceramic cuprate, heavy fermion, and organic superconductors posed stark contradictions to metallic superconductors and the BCS theory's principles. Aside from their high critical temperatures, Cuprate superconductors exhibit anisotropy in their crystal structure and energy gap, and electrical resistivity does not drop as sharply around the critical temperature. Heavy fermion and organic superconductors were initially thought to obey the BCS theory, but 
It was also shown that electrons in these materials did not form Cooper pairs in the same way they do as proposed in BCS theory. These materials offered not only a challenge for scientists looking to understand superconductivity, but also a promising new avenue of research that could potentially revolutionize superconductivity and human life. To this day, the matter of unconventional superconductivity is heavily debated, and two main theories exist to explain the phenomenon. The first theory, resonating valence bond theory, predicts that in cuprate superconductors, electrons from neighboring copper atoms form valence bonds, which can then act as mobile Cooper pairs due to doping. Recent discoveries have provided support for this theory. The second theory, spin fluctuation, predicts that Cooper pairs are not formed by electron-phonon interactions, but by short-range spin waves. Evidence also supports this hypothesis in heavy fermion materials. What is known about unconventional superconductors is that electron pairing does occur, although not due to electron-phonon interactions and not with simple S-wave symmetries. The energy gap in conventional superconductors is also different from that in unconventional ones. Extensive research has been conducted into the material properties of unconventional superconductors, such as crystal structure, the mechanisms and effects of doping, and pressure and rotation. The crystal structures of ceramic cuprates and some heavy fermion superconductors are layered arrangements of alternating conducting and doping molecules, with the doping molecules, or atoms, serving as charge carrier reservoirs. This gives rise to the superconductor's anisotropy. More layers of conducting molecules leads to higher critical temperature. However, this effect has quickly diminishing and eventually decreasing returns. The highest critical temperature in the cuprate families is currently achieved with 30 layers of cuprate with doping. Organic superconductors have crystal structures that are columnar, with similar layers of salts divided by anions. In 2008, a new class of superconductors was discovered that consisted of iron, oxygen, and a group 15 element. The highest critical temperature achieved in this class of superconductors was 43 degrees Kelvin, also higher than predicted possible. At the moment, the highest critical temperature at standard pressure is approximately 138 Kelvin, found in mercury barium calcium copper oxide, a ceramic cuprate. In 2015, hydrogen sulfide was found to be superconducting at a temperature below 203 Kelvin under immense pressure, 150 gigapascals. In 2018, Researchers at MIT discovered that bilayer graphene could be made superconductive when twisted 1.1 degrees. Thus, all the so far discovered classes of superconductors share the same basic properties, lack of electric resistivity below the critical temperature, phase transitions, and the Meissner effect. However, many drastic differences exist between all superconductors, a majority of which are still not understood. Superconducting materials are currently used in a number of technological applications. MRI machines implement superconductors to create strong magnetic fields, as do mass spectrometers, particle accelerators, and many other components that require strong magnetic fields. Superconductors can also be used in digital circuits, microwave, and radio frequency filters, superconducting quantum interference devices, and components that require sensitivity to magnetic fields. Room temperature superconductivity could allow for the use of superconductors in many new places, such as maglev trains, power lines, electric motors, and countless other devices, as liquid gases would not be required to cool these applications. 
Much research still remains to be done in the field of superconductivity, and advancements are made every year. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed, leave a like or a favorite, share the video with your friends, or even subscribe for more educational documentaries. Check out some of the other videos on the channel, or check out the featured channels for more content.